Beaches.ie is the best place for you to find up-to-date information about water quality at your favourite beach. But how do we go from this to data on Beaches.ie? The bathing season runs from the 1st of June until the 15th of September. But well before the bathing season even starts, the Water Quality Laboratory team meet with the Beach Management Committee and other stakeholders including Water Services, Irish Water, Ontashka, the HSE, the Municipal Districts, Environmental Awareness Officers and the Lifeguard Service. We then draft our sampling calendar for the coming bathing season. This calendar is then published and these dates are set. Health and safety is a key concern and we draft a site specific risk assessment for each and every beach we sample. Just like continuity mistakes can ruin a good movie, accuracy is really important in the laboratory. Especially when testing for bacteria that could harm people's health, quality is essential. There's no point producing results unless we're sure that they're correct. We have a full-time quality manager and staff and the methods are audited internally and externally by accreditation bodies on a constant basis. Cork County Council is the oldest continuously accredited local authority laboratory service in the state. Preparations start the Friday before sampling when the entire lab is scrubbed top to bottom with very strong disinfectant. With the lab ready to receive the samples, it's time to go get them. Some things you can measure right here in the field, like the salinity of the water and the temperature of the water. So here today it's 29.4 salinity units and it's 18.1 degrees Celsius. But to test bacteria, we have to take a sample and that means getting into the water. But this isn't the right gear for the job. All kitted out in accordance with our health and safety procedures. And now it's time to get wet. We wade out until we're one meter deep in the water. And then the sample is taken 30 centimeters below the surface of the water. So now we've got our sample, but these bacteria that normally live in the nice warm cosy gut of a mammal have been in the ocean. They're quite cold and in such small numbers we can't really count them. So how do we recreate those circumstances and provide these bacteria with food, warmth, low oxygen conditions and basically what they had before, the gut of a mammal. Back in the laboratory, we can recreate those conditions in a very precise and consistent way. And until we get back to the lab, we'll keep the bacteria nice and chilled in a temperature controlled cool box that's calibrated in accordance with our quality system. Meanwhile, back in the lab, agar or food for the bacteria is being prepared. The microbiology lab is just one of the specialist laboratories we have on site, meaning we can test bathing waters, drinking waters, fresh waters and waste waters. Freshly sterilised containers are used for everything we do. If bacteria are present in the sample, when they grow, they could be in quite large numbers. So to make sure we count them properly, we actually water down the sample with a buffer solution, effectively dividing it by 10. We get an accurate count, and then we multiply by 10 to get back to what the numbers would have been. We add our sample, and then it's pulled through a filter paper that catches any bacteria present in the water. We then remove the filter paper and place it on an agar plate. All the samples are then placed in our incubator, where they stay for 48 hours. The enterococci bacteria are revived by keeping them at 36 degrees Celsius for four hours, about the same temperature as your body. But enterococci actually thrive at 44 degrees Celsius, so by having a fever, you're actually doing them a favor. This creates the optimum conditions for the bacteria to grow. So if they're present, they'll multiply to the point where we can easily count them. We use a separate process to detect coliforms and E. coli. The sample is unfiltered, but we dilute it down with a 10 to 1 ratio. 
Then we add a reagent called Coley Dirt and shake it all up. We then pour the mixture of sample and Coley Dirt into what looks like an ice cube tray. It's called a Quanta tray and it's going to help us with a statistical analysis of the number and type of bacteria present. Then we heat seal it and it's ready to go into the incubator for 24 hours. This time the incubator stays at 36 degrees Celsius for the whole period. Part of your body's immune response to E. coli will be to develop a fever to fight the infection. But we keep the incubators at an optimum 36 degrees Celsius to make sure we're getting the worst case scenario, bacteria growth. While we're waiting for the 24 hours to pass, the endless process of keeping the lab absolutely sterile continues. The following workday, when 24 hours have elapsed, we can take the quanta trays from the incubators and start counting. Any squares in the quanta tray that have turned yellow mean that there are coliforms present. When viewed under ultraviolet light, any squares that are glowing mean that there are E. coli present. And by combining the number of large squares and small squares that have been marked off, and using statistical lookup tables, we can determine the most probable number of bacteria that are present in the sample. Of course, we also have to factor in the dilution that we did at the start. Here we have two large squares and zero small squares, which means 2.0 multiplied by the dilution factor of 10, so 20 most probable number of E. coli in our sample. Another 24 hours and it's time to count the agar plates to see how the enterococci, if they're present, have multiplied. All that's needed here is a keen eye and we can directly count them on the plate and then again factor in the dilution that we had at the start of the process to come up with the number of enterococci present. In parallel with our sample, we've also done exactly the same analytical process on sterile water and standards sent from bacteriological labs. And this way we know that our system is working. Once the results have been passed by the quality manager, then they can be issued. We then upload the results to the EPA via their Eden portal, where they're once again checked, and then they appear on beaches.ie. And that's how we go from this data on beaches.ie